problems of loan working have increased since the early part of the 20th century. As farming became progressively more reliant on technology, teams of farm workers were increasingly replaced by a single operator and a machine. But while bringing economic benefits to the farmer by reducing the numbers of workers, the introduction of new technologies have also, historically at least, always brought unforeseen risks in their wake. This is a 1916 Titan tractor that uh, was imported during the First World War. Uh, one of the probably most dangerous machines that uh, we imported from America. Everything is exposed. The exhaust goes along underneath and you're in a cloud of paraffin vapour all the while it is going. Everything on the top is exposed and one should us to think how long the poor driver stood the strain. As you can see, all the cogs, all the gears and chains are exposed right against the foot brake where your foot's just here, right against there, catches your toes if you're not careful. Now, if you was using it in a stationary uh, configuration like threshing or something like that, the operator would have to come along the side, they would put the belt on here and while it was running he would have to push this clutch in and out, that would take it out so you could drive it and it would push it in to start the machine and you can just imagine he's got his hands right in all these gears trying to get it into gear to go threshing, which is terribly dangerous. The tractor is still a mainstay of farm equipment. The makers of farm equipment have responded to increasingly stringent legislation, which has meant that machinery has to comply with safety standards. Cabs are fully enclosed, reducing noise and dust for the driver. But machines need maintenance, and so workshop facilities are also needed, introducing yet more hazards. This is probably one of the most dangerous pieces of equipment we have in the workshop. Numerous lads tend to use them. Without the guards, the guards get contaminated, they flick them up, don't put the goggles on, and then the next thing is a trip down the hospital to have uh, the foreign body removed. If you are wearing ordinary glasses, what it actually does to you? As you can see, these are like sandpaper, where the abrasion has uh, dug into the lens and, in fact, they're actually spoiled. But I tell my lads, your eyes will be like that if you do not wear safety glasses. And if that was your eyeball, you wouldn't be able to see and you only get one pair of eyes. Eight o'clock on the morning of the show and Brian Knight is busy preparing a steam engine which will be driven to the event. So we'll light the fire. How long will it take to actually get going? Two hours. Two hours. We'll light the fire with damp matches. This is the maximum size of bag that we're allowed to carry today. 25 kilos. When I was a lad, we was expected to carry four times that amount. Right, that's it. We can go for a two hour tea break now. In the past, harvest represented one of the most hazardous times of the year, even before mechanisation. The processes of cutting and then threshing produced clouds of dust which had long-term effects, often manifested as farmer's lung. The creeping onset of symptoms has always tended to disguise the condition, to the extent that cause and effect are often still denied today. We used to, we used to thrash, we used to... Like this mill, we used to come out of a uh, two hours milling covered from head to foot in, in dust and we never wore a mask, but perhaps we were lucky, I don't know, but we never had any breathing problems. 
I think the farm has long come, Jack, from mouldy hay, wasn't it? Oh, that's the killer. That's yes, the killer. The, the, the mould in the mold, hay yes, was alive, right. wasn't yes, it? And it, right. it, it grew, yeah. in, grew in the lung, didn't it? I suppose it? so, yes. With the that, dust, we could killer. spit it up yeah. and chuck it out. Right, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A fair bit of hawking and spitting went on. Yeah, black coal and all that on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you laugh about it, but it's yeah. true, isn't it? Oh, yeah. On a day's combine, and you could come home and cough up soot. The working weekend is finally underway. The weather is fine, the machinery is running, and people are beginning to roll in. The weekend replicates all the key stages of a harvest. Early combine harvesters cut and thresh the corn internally, producing grain ready for milling. But before the combine was developed, Corn had to be cut and bound before being carried to separate stationary threshing machines, often driven by steam. From precarious operating positions on top of the machines, sheaves would be loaded into a lethal set of moving drums where the wheat was separated from the chaff. Having been collected in sacks, the wheat itself can then be poured into a steam-driven mill to produce flour, which is ready to be taken by visitors and made into bread. I just have to look after the interests, not only of the public, but the interests of um, our hobby. And let's face it, this is a hobby, the collection of old farm machinery and the working of it. And it demonstrates to the public what used to happen years ago. There are two combines here, um, which would have come into this country in the 40s, um, and they're both working today. Now, that's a fairly good lifespan. But while a fine day out for the public, throughout this reconstruction of a community in the throes of early mechanization, there is the constant underlying reminder of its attendant dangers. I, when I look at some of the old machinery, you know, I, I really shudder. Um, you, you've got unguarded belts, unguarded beds on um, thrashing machines, unguarded drums on thrashing machines, and, and it's perfectly horrific. We now have um, development of legislation um, whereby um, machine manufacture has to have in inherent safety um, devices built into it at the manufacturing stage, which is absolutely brilliant. It, it, it really helps. But then again, you, you can't always take into account the person that's going to take a guard off or stand in front of a machine or, or whatever. Underneath there is a standard power drive of the 1950s, which has got a perfectly good guard on it. Nothing wrong with the guard at all, quite safe, you can stand on it. But what happens to it in those days, it was to buckle up and would not work. And then the operator would take it off, throw it off like that. Great difficulty, and throw it down and carry on without it. No safety officer to come and complain with him. This exposes what we call is the killer. This will tear your trousers off, wrap you around, and if you happen to fall on it, you're injured for life. Other members of the Knight family are in the tea shop, providing refreshments for the visitors as a welcome rest from the vicarious toil of harvest. Really well cooked sausage here. The domesticity of the equipment being used here disguises another whole variety of safety hazards. There are open flames, gas containers, boiling water, 
all of which must be treated with caution. And at the working weekend, there is also a responsibility on the organisers to be especially vigilant because it's a public event. Open belts, open gears, chains. So I have to ensure, and I use this thing uh, to keep my eye on it and say, Oi, you know, out of the way, please. Um, and in certain cases, we even have to have um, some stewards with ropes uh, walking along to keep people away. I cannot allow a passenger, for instance, on a tractor. Um, I cannot allow any child to drive a tractor, even though he probably is quite capable. The other great headache is, of course, not only this machinery, but I've got to keep my eye on those steamers over there as well, because steam is wonderful, but it's an atom bomb, really. Um, shortage of water, um, malfunction of a safety valve, um, a boiler blue, it, it just doesn't bear thinking about. With a steam engine, as you add the fire, the water temperature rises and the machine generates steam. As the steam's generated, the pressure raises in the boiler. If you add water to keep the water level right, it cools the boiler and the pressure comes down. Now, if you forget to do that, there's a safety device and the safety valve on the steam engine will blow and all steam will come out the top of the, uh, of the steam engine. Um, that's considered to be poor driving. You mustn't do that because wasting water is wasting coal. It's a waste of energy. Um, if you go away and leave the steam engine and completely forget about it, there's a secondary safety device which puts the fire out. If the water level drops, it drops below the fusible plug, which is a, a brass plug filled with lead. It melts the lead, the water or the steam all shoots in and puts the fire out and stops the steam engine. And that's considered to be the worst possible thing a steam engine driver can do, shoot him for that. This engine's going to be coming here for a few years yet. Oh, I hope so, yes. Yes, it's been in the family, I think, longer than I have, so hopefully it'll be here a little bit longer yet. Yeah. Throughout the day-long harvest, the weather remains fine, and another successful year passes for the organisers of the Little Casterton Working Weekend. But just as this machinery was once the future of farming, so we might wonder what equipment might find itself on display at the historic working weekends of tomorrow. And visiting these same fields that have been farmed for centuries, what will our children make of the agricultural equipment and environmental practices of today?